batteries a cell or a battery arrangement of one or more cells connected in series is basically a galvanic cell and used where the chemical energy redox reaction is converted into electrical energy batteries are of two types one primary and two secondary primary batteries in these batteries the cell reaction occurs only once and the battery becomes dead after use over a period of time and cannot be reused example dry cells like Leclanchy cell and mercury cell Leclanchy cell invented by George Leclanchy in 1865 the cell consists of a carbon rod placed in a porous pot the carbon rod powered C plus MnO2 act as cathode and amalgamated zinc rod act as anode the porous pot and zinc rod are placed in 20% NH4Cl ammonium chloride solution taken in a glass jar. This cell does not maintain steady current for long time. Modified Leclanchy cell. It consists of a cylindrical zinc vessel covered with a cardboard. This is sealed with pitch. Zinc vessel act as anode and carbon rod act as cathode. The carbon rod, which is at the center of the vessel, surrounded by a paste of C plus MnO2, which is surrounded with a paste of NH4Cl. Both the pastes are separated by a porous sheet EMF of the cell is 1.5 volt. MnO2 act as cathodic depolarizer and facilitates the H plus ion discharge reaction by removing the absorbed hydrogen atoms. Leclanche cell Construction Georges Leclanche constructed the Leclanche cell in 1865. In this cell, a carbon rod is placed in a porous spot containing a mixture of manganese dioxide, MnO2, and powdered carbon. The porous spot and an amalgamated zinc rod are placed in a glass jar containing saturated ammonium chloride solution. Ammonium chloride solution is the electrolyte and carbon and zinc rods are the electrodes. The mouth of the glass jar is sealed with pitch so that the ammonium chloride does not seep out. Let us now look at the chemical reactions taking place inside the cell to understand how the electrodes get charged. Ammonium chloride, the electrolyte, splits into ammonium and chloride ions. The chloride ions move towards the zinc rod and transfer their electrons to the zinc rod, forming zinc chloride. The zinc rod attains negative charge due to excess of electrons. Thus, the zinc rod becomes the cathode, the negative electrode. On the other hand, ammonium ions move to the carbon rod. The free ions of the carbon rod neutralize the ammonium ions, forming ammonia and hydrogen gas. As a result, the carbon rod attains positive charge due to deficiency of electrons. Thus, the carbon rod becomes the anode, the positive electrode. The hydrogen gas is oxidized by manganese dioxide to form water and polarization is prevented. Now, if an external copper wire is connected to the electrodes, the electrons will move from the cathode to the anode generating electricity. The EMF of the Leclanche cell is 1.5 volts. mercury cell the cell reaction is shown the cell potential is approximately 1.35 volts and remains constant throughout its life since overall reaction does not involve any iron the concentration of which 
can change during its lifetime. H.G. Mercury Hello guys, in this video we are going to discuss some applications on galvanic cells. A voltaic cell can be primary or secondary. In this video we are going to discuss the primary cells. And in the next videos we will discuss the secondary types. Primary cells are not rechargeable and are discarded after they run down when all the chemicals are used up. In other words, no more chemical potential energy available or the chemicals in the battery can react to produce electrical energy. Here I got the illustration of what happens to the primary cell. The anode loses electrons to the cathode and both connected by a wire. Here the cell generating electrical current, but when the battery is run out of reactants and almost they all turn it into products, the cell stops working and it can't be recharged again. So here is an example on primary cell, which is dry cell. Dry cell battery is a voltage producing battery containing the electrolyte chemical in the form of a thick paste. It produces voltages of about 1.5 volts. In this diagram, which represents the parts of a dry cell battery, the zinc casing provides enclosing to the electrolyte and the, the cathode as a whole. Ammonium chloride is the electrolyte used in this type of battery. Just ahead of the electrolyte lies a manganese dioxide separated from the electrolyte by a separator. At the center of the cell battery lies a carbon rod which is the cathode. And zinc casing is, con is considered as the anode. So let's understand how it works. Every portion of the battery device has chemical reactions occurring within. While a reduction reaction occurs at the carbon electrode, oxidation proceeds at the zinc casing, which is the anode. The chemical reactions that define the entire energy process are as follows. At the anode, zinc loses two electrons and is converted into zinc 2 plus ion. The ammonium ion from ammonium chloride reacts with the two electrons to produce ammonia and hydrogen gas. The manganese dioxide near the cathode reacts with hydrogen gas liberated to form manganese 3 oxide and water. Combining equation 1 and 2, we get the following equation. And combining all the above equations, we get... Due to these reactions, chemical energy gets converted into electrical energy. This energy then flows from the battery to the connected device through the outer Next circuit. Storage battery. It normally consists of six voltaic cells connected in series. In each cell anode is made of spongy lead and cathode is a grid of lead packed with lead dioxide. Electrolyte is H2SO4 solution which is 38% by mass. Sulfuric acid is consumed in the reaction during discharge of the battery and as a result the density of acid falls when the density of solution falls below 1.20 gram centimeter raised to the power minus 3 battery needs recharging when electrical energy is supplied to the battery from an external DC source cell operates like an electrolytic cell and chemical reactions take place but now the electrode reactions are reverse from those that occur during the discharge of the battery. To increase current output of the cell, anode and cathode are arranged in alternating manner and are separated from each other by sheets of insulating material. Each voltage cell has a potential difference of about 2 volts. Therefore, to have an output of 12 volts, 6 cells of the battery are connected in series.